everyone, it is time for Middle Grade March. I am so excited. Middle Grade March is one of my favorite readathons that I do during the whole year. Of course, I start filming, my cat appears. Um, yeah, it's one of my very favorite readathons. If you don't know what it is, I'll link the announcement videos down below. But it's just a readathon where you read middle grade books <laughs> all month long. And you can read one or you can read as many as you want. I always make a big TBR because I like to kind of mood read during the readathon. And so I have a lot of books to share. I'll talk about them based on the prompts. So what fits under which prompt. And I'll just give like a one line kind of thing about each of them. So I don't take up too much time. If this guy will probably show up a little bit throughout because he waits until I start filming and then he comes running. I don't know what the deal is. So if the <laughs> tripod shakes, that's why. So let's get started talking about some middle grade books. Before I talk about the books, I will say that I wanted to make sure that I was only picking books that I own physically because that's one of my challenges this year is that I really want to be reading my physical books. I own a ton of middle grade books, so I figured it would be easy to find ones of the prompts. And you will see that some prompts I have like a ton of books that fulfill those prompts and then other ones I might only have a couple. So, but I wanted to make sure that I was reading from my shelves. The first prompt is to read a book that has won an award other than the Newbery Award. And so this one I only had one book for. I probably do have other books on my shelf. I just didn't want to research like every book I own. So I was just going through and looking for ones that had a, you know, sticker, metal sticker on the front of them. And um, there were a ton of Newbery ones. So this was the only one I could find that had other awards on it. And this one won, um, had, was an honor for the Coretta Scott King Award and won the Scott O'Dell Award for Historical Fiction. And that's Finding Langston by Lisa Klein Ransom. This is the first in a historical fiction series trilogy. And um, this one takes place during the Great, Great Migration. And I've been wanting to read this one for a long time. It's short. So since it's the only one for this prompt, it's gonna happen. And I'm really excited to finally get to this because I always hear great things about it. Then the next category is science fiction or dystopian novel. And the first one I have for this is the group book, A Rover Story by Jasmine Warga. And yes, this is a library book, but I won one of the giveaway copies. Each of the hosts was giving away a book and I won one of them. And so I got this from the library to show you in my TBR, but I'll send it back to the library and hopefully get my copy before the readathon starts or in time to read it for the readathon. And I'm really excited to read this one because I have read another book by this author and really enjoyed it. And um, this is about a Mars rover that I think starts to develop emotions. So that'll be an interesting, interesting one to read. Then I have a book I want to read with my daughter, at least my older daughter, maybe my younger would join in because this one I think is a little shorter. She doesn't have as long as a, of an attention span as my eight-year-old, so I don't know if the five-year-old will join. But this is The Wild Robot by Peter Brown, and it's about a robot that gets deserted on an island, and I think makes friends with the animals there or something, or has to survive. And I just heard that this is a really great read aloud for young kids, so I'm excited to read that with my daughter. And then I had a few other ones on my shelf that I might pick up. I have Monstrous Devices by Damien Love. And this is about a boy who receives a robot in the mail from his grandfather and then strange things start to happen. And I think it's supposed to be kind of a dark science fiction. So that'll be interesting. Next, I have Sputnik's Guide to Life on Earth by Frank Cottrell Boyce. And this one is about a boy who meets an alien, but the alien looks like a dog to everyone else. And so I don't know what's gonna happen, but alien story. And the last one in this category is The Extraordinary Colors of Autumn Dare by Zilla Bethel. And this one is about a boy who can't see color. And then he and a friend find this like giant robot and are trying to figure out what the robot's there. I think this is more of a dystopian because it was saying in the in the front that they are running out like everywhere is running out of water. So I think it might be more of a dystopian than a science fiction. The next category is a book with sea or sky on the cover. And the first one is a buddy read I am doing with um, Amy from Now I Forgot Her Channel. So I'll write it down here. And um, we are reading Sisters of the Never Sea by Cynthia Leidig Smith. And this is a Peter Pan retelling told from an indigenous author. And then I have Hazel Bly and the Deep Blue Sea by Ashley Herring Blake. And this is about a girl who one of her moms dies. And so she moves with her other mom 
to this like seaside village and this town is obsessed with some kind of mermaid myth and I just love this cover with the mermaids on it. Then I have In Darkling Wood by Emma Carroll and this one is about a girl who goes to live at her grandmother's house I believe yeah and it's right by this like dark mysterious woods. And then I have The War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley and this is the sequel to The War That Saved My Life which takes place during World War II. It's historical fiction and I really loved that first book so I would love to finish off the duology. Then another continuation of series I have Castle in the Air by Diana Wynne Jones and this is a companion novel to Howl's Moving Castle and I don't really know what this is about but the one of the taglines says that it involves a cantankerous carpet, a cranky genie in a bottle, a dishonest soldier, and a very opinionated black cat. And as you could tell I have a black cat um, and I would say he doesn't talk but he's pretty opinionated <laughs> like what he wants to do. So I think that would be a fun one to continue the series. Then I have a couple that are like beginning in series that I might get to. I have Peter Nimble and His Fantastic Eyes by Johnny Jonathan Oxier. And this is about a blind orphan who is also a thief. And then one day he steals this box that has magical eyes in it. And then I have Winter House by Ben Gooderson. I believe this is about a girl who is like sent off to this hotel and mysterious things are happening in this hotel. And she has to solve some like puzzles and mysteries. I've heard good things about this series. The next category is a book with a neurodivergent main character and first I have My Life as an Ice Cream Sandwich by E.B. Savoy and I did start this. I got a couple chapters into it earlier this year so I want to read this and I don't think that she is like explicitly the main character given any kind of diagnosis on page at least so far. But you can tell that she interacts with the world in a little different way, that her mind works differently, um, just based on what I've read so far. And I've been enjoying this. And basically, it's about this girl who, um, she's from Alabama, but is spending the summer with her father in Harlem and just her experiences with him. And she also, like, often imagines that she is, like, in this kind of, like, science fiction world where she's, like, an astronaut. And that's kind of, like, one of her ways to kind of escape, like, society um, and like feeling overwhelmed just to escape into this kind of like sci-fi world. Then I have Waiting for Normal by Leslie Connor and this doesn't have a long description um, but I found this under a list of you know I was looking up middle grade books with neurodivergent characters and this was on that list. I'm like oh I own that book but I don't really know what it is about necessarily and it um, just sounds like it from the back that Addie is waiting for normal but her, Addie's mother has an all or nothing approach to life and so just trying to figure out what normal is for her. And this one also won an award. It says on the front, Schneider Family Book Award. So this would count for the first prompt as well. And then the last one in this category is Percy Jackson's Greek Heroes by Rick Riordan. And this is just like a series of like Greek myth retellings, but it's like retold with Percy Jackson as the narrator. And Percy Jackson has um, both dyslexia and ADHD. So I figure this counts since he's the narrator in this. And the last category is a book published within the last year. I only own two books that were published in 2022. Um, but I also have, I think the group book counts for this because I'm pretty sure that's a 2022 release. But yeah, of the two that I own, I have Orion and the Starboard by K.B. Hoyle. And this is about a boy who thinks he's human, thinks everything's normal, but then suddenly strange things start happening around him and he finds out that maybe he has a different history that he didn't know about. And then I have Layla and the Blue Fox by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. And this one, I don't really know, the back doesn't give us a lot, but I think it's like there's a fox wandering around in the Arctic and a little girl that's looking for her mother. And it sounds like they will meet each other and go on a journey together. It's just a gorgeous cover. So yeah, this one was also published last year. So those are some of the books that I am thinking about reading for Middle Grade March. I also have some other books that didn't fit into any of these prompts that I would like to read because they're part of like my yearly challenges. Like they might have been one of the like 23 books to read in 2023 or some series that I wanted to finish. So I might, you know, read some of those other ones that don't appear on this TBR. But this will be the main thing that I will try to pull from first. And I also will have another TBR coming up 
that are for some other readathons I'm doing. I don't have very many for that, but there are like a couple adult books and some things that I would like to intersperse amongst these things. But let me know if you're participating in Middle Grade March. I really love it. And if you are participating, just know that there are like live shows, other ways to kind of be in community with other people that are also reading Middle Grade. And I hope to see you next time.